Hello dear students, welcome to the e-content lecture series on the subject botany. Today our topic is a general account of bamboos. In this lecture, we are going to first of all try to understand the botany of bamboos. Then we will describe the cultivation of bamboos and thirdly we will highlight the economic uses of bamboos. So let us start with the botany of bamboos. Bamboo is a large group of evergreen plants that belongs to the gross family Poaceae. Over 1000 species and 91 genera of bamboo exist throughout the world. Bamboos grow in a wide range of climates and regions. They have the ability to grow in regions that range from sub-Saharan deserts of Africa to the cold mountain terrain of the Himalayas. The size of bamboo species varies greatly. The smallest of bamboos, they grow to a height of about 11 inches. While the giant timber bamboos, they can reach up to the heights of about 100 feet. Regarding the classification of bamboos, bamboos belong to the kingdom Plantae, Dugen, Magdoliophyta, class, Liliopsida, subclass, Comelinidae, order, Cyprales, family, Poaceae, subfamily, Bombocidae, tribe, Bombocy, and the subtribe, Bombocini. A typical bamboo plant is structurally unique. The main components of a bamboo plant include rhizomes, roots, clumps, branches, leaves, and flowers. Let us start with rhizomes. Rhizomes are basically horizontal stems which extend from the main plant body, but they grow underground. As the rhizomes spread under the soil, they collect and store the primary nutrients for growth. This enables a bamboo plant to utilize energy which is required for rapid and massive growth. With the passage of time, the rhizomes create an interconnected system of plants, all of which derive nutrients from the rhizomes. In other words, we can say, when a single bamboo plant is planted in an area, all other bamboo plants that emerge out of it belong to the same individual organism. In its morphology, rhizomes are segmented, covered by a protective sheath. This sheath provides the protection which is needed to breach the surface to form a clump. The leaves are reduced along the sheath is as they don't perform photosynthesis under the soil. A healthy rhizome in bamboo is typically yellowish in color, but it may be also sometimes red, brown, green, or even purple. The rhizome system of bamboo is generally divided into two distinct categories. Number first, we call it as pachymorph rhizome system, or other words, clumping or symporial. Second type of rhizome system can be leptomorph, also called as running or monopodial. First, the pachymorph rhizome system. It occurs in clump forming bamboos and expands horizontally by short distances each year. The rhizomes are generally short and thick in their appearance. They go upwards in close proximity to the main plant. At their nodes, new rhizomes or roots can be produced and also the new columns are formed at the very tip of the rhizome. It is this feature of the rhizomes that causes them to go upwards and exhibits the clumping behavior. The clumping bamboo generally stay in close proximity to the main plant. Some common genera of clumping bamboos include Bambusa, Dendrocalamus, or Fargacea. Second type of rhizome system is Leptomorph. It occurs in running bamboos. Generally, these are long but thin in appearance. In contrast to the pachymorph system, 
these rhizomes have a tendency to branch away from the main plant. At the nodes, they produce buds, which produce either new columns or the rhizomes. The running bamboos are spreading by nature, and they have the ability to spread over considerable distances each year. Some species can even spread up to 20 feet each year, often requiring growers to implement various control methods. Some examples of running bamboos include Arundinaria, Pylostachys, Pilioblastis. Now coming to the roots. The primary function of roots in a bamboo plant is to anchor the column to the ground. By this, the column is able to hold more weight and thus gives it the ability to grow more leaves over much wider distances. Though the roots can store nutrients, however, this is not their primary function. In appearance, the roots in bamboos are typically symmetrical in size and shape. They form at the base of the column from the rhizome nodes and generally go up to the depth of one feet below the surface. Now the columns. Columns are the most distinguishable feature of a bamboo plant. They can vary in size, shape, color, or even smell. The appearance can range from thick or thin, tall or short, erect or bent, or can exhibit irregular patterns. Most of the columns are rounded in shape, but some species exhibit a square-like appearance. The color of columns also has a wide range of characteristics. Although the majority of the bamboos are green, they can also be brown, black, yellow, or even striped. One of the most popular garden bamboos, what is known as black bamboo, is unique. It has the columns with jet black color. The columns can also vary in their smell. An interesting example is incense bamboo, which has a waxy coat on the columns that emits a pleasant fragrance, just similar to the incense. Now the branches. In a bamboo plant, usually when the columns sheath off, branches start to grow from the nodes. The majority of the bamboo species bear multiple branches from a single bud, which is located at the node. Both the timing and the appearance of branches, it varies substantially among different genera. In many rounding bamboos, such as pylostaches, the branches start to grow almost immediately after the protective sheaths fall off. In other types of bamboos, branches may not appear for an entire period. Now, another component of a bamboo plant are the leaves. Leaves are present at the main portion of the bamboo plant, such as rhizomes, column, and branches. A typical bamboo leaf consists of two different parts. First, sheath, and the second, blade. The sheath wraps around the stem to which it is attached at the sheath base. The opposite, or we can say the distal end of the sheath, develops into the blade, which is often flat and bent away from the main stem. The leaf blade performs the photosynthetic function of the plant by converting sunlight into energy. The appearance of the leaf blade, it varies between different species. Bamboos have generally two distinct kinds of leaves. One type of leaf we called as column leaves, and the second type of leaves we call them as foliage leaves. Column leaves are basically attached at the base of their sheath directly to the column node at the sheath scar. While as the foliage leaves, they grow from the branchlets. Now the important part in a bamboo plant are the flowers. The flowers in bamboos are less spectacular than the flowers of majority of the plants. They are less conspicuous. Like most of the grasses, petals are absent in the flowers of bamboos. Thus, 
they lack the ability to attract insects for pollination. The flower is structured for maximum effect effectiveness with wind pollination, what is called as anemophily. Unlike the majority of the plants, most bamboo species flower very infrequently. The typical bamboo flowering interval can be decades long. For example, Japanese timber, scientifically named as Phyllostachys bambusoides, it has the longest known flowering interval of about 130 years. Bamboos exhibit what is commonly known as gregarious flowering. During such an event of gregarious flowering, all the plants in a bamboo grew flower simultaneously, regardless of the prevailing environmental conditions. Now let us discuss the second part that is the cultivation of bamboo. Cultivating bamboos can be a significant challenge for many growers. A grower must factor in the various factors like climate, soil, placement, and the bamboo type along with many other variables. On the positive side, growing bamboo is relatively inexpensive and can add amazing beauty to the garden. Bamboos are cultivated for ornamental and garden purposes and also as a hedge and ground cover. Most of the bamboo species are cultivated successfully in tropical and temperate climates. In optimum conditions, bamboo has the potential to grow more than three inches per day, thus making it the fastest growing woody plant in the world. Cultivating bamboo is fairly very straightforward, but there are few basic guidelines which need to be followed. Number first thing is the bamboo placement. Preparation of the bamboo growing site is an important first step. There are five main factors to be considered when determining the placement of bamboo specimens. These factors are climate, sunlight, soil, wind, and spacing. Let us discuss these factors one by one. Climate. First of all, the climate. Bamboos preferably grow well in tropical and warm temperate climates. Thus, to ensure success, the type of bamboo must be suitable to the local climate. Second factor is sunlight. Most bamboos flourish in full sunlight. This is especially true for giant timber bamboos. However, some of the tropical species, they also require shade during the hottest parts of the day. The third factor is soil. Bamboo shows little preference when it comes to the soil. However, all bamboos do well in loamy type of soil. In general, bamboos prefer a slightly acidic to moderately acidic soils. Always, Rocky soils should be avoided for the cultivation of bamboos. Another factor is wind. Bamboos have a fairly shallow root system. At the same time, they grow tall and fast. This makes bamboo very susceptible to wind damage. That's why fast winds have the potential to uproot a bamboo plant and can also lead to dehydration. That's why growing bamboos on lands with surrounding hedges or trees provide wind protection. Another factor is spacing. Spacing multiple bamboo plants is extremely important. The general rule is to space the bamboo three to five feet from each other. Now, little bit about maintenance of bamboo, which we grow outdoor. Bamboo is basically an aggressive plant and requires general maintenance throughout the year. Some of these maintenance tasks which need to be taken into consideration include, number first, watering, 
fertilizer, thinning and pruning, controlling its spread, more particularly in running bamboos and also winter production. After discussing the maintenance of bamboos outdoors, now let us discuss the maintenance of potted bamboo indoors. As we know, bamboo is a beautiful plant to be kept in the houses or in offices and it thrives well under the suitable conditions. Therefore, the right pottery of bamboos will give a house or an office a very organic and inviting look. Some general guidelines which need to be followed for growing bamboos indoors are, first of all, the sunlight, watering, fertilizer, and very important, repotting. Now let us discuss the third part of today's lecture that is economic importance of bamboos. As we know, bamboo is an evergreen plant and also it is the fastest growing woody perennial on the planet Earth. And that's why some of the giant species can grow up to four feet per day. Bamboo is found, in fact, on nearly every continent in the world and has therefore a wide range of economic importance. The bamboo products are used extensively in modern world and its usage has been growing rapidly in recent years. In the year 2012, the bamboo goods industry is expected to be worth about 25 billion US dollars. Bamboo is an easily renewable resource and its cultivation is beneficial to the environment. That means it's an eco-friendly. A bamboo grew can create five times more biomaterial or in other words biomass than a typical pine forest, thus making it most beneficial to the environment. Bamboo has both economic and decorative uses. In many parts of the world, it is used as food, fodder, the primary construction material, and also for making great variety of useful objects. On the one side, kitchen tools to paper and dinnerware. The different species of bamboos are commonly used for furniture, construction, musical instruments, and many more things. The varying appearance of bamboo makes it as an ideal choice for ornamental and landscaping purposes. Some of the important uses of bamboos are, number first, bamboo as food. The shoots, especially the young shoots of bamboo, that is the new columns that emerge out of the soil, they are highly edible. That's why they are used in numerous dishes. They are available in various sliced forms, both as fresh and also in canned versions. Bamboo is also used as a construction material. Bamboo used in construction is, first of all, pre-treated to resist it against insects and fungal rot. Most common method is to treat the bamboo with a mixture of borax and boric acid. Bamboo is primarily used as a supplemental and sometimes decorative element in buildings, such as fencing, bridges, and gutters. Bamboo has been extensively used as reinforcement for concrete, and in many cases, bamboo is also used to make huge ladders. In fact, the laminated bamboo products are used in flooring, cabinet making, furniture, or even in decorations. Bamboos, these laminated bamboos are currently gaining wide popularity. Now, one more important use of bamboos is bamboo as medicine. In Chinese medicine, bamboo is used for treating various infections and also to heal the various types of wounds. It is used as a tonic against respiratory diseases in Ayurveda and Yunani system of medicines. Some other uses of bamboos are in India, China and other Southeast Asian countries where the bamboo pulps are used in printing and also in making writing papers. The most common 
bamboo species which are used for paper making are Dendrocalamus asper and Bamboo bilumania. Due to its flexibility, bamboo is also used to make various types of musical instruments, arches, sticks, and fishing rods. In fact, the cultural significance of bamboo is quite profound and it has been well documented in ancient history. For instance, bamboo was extensively used as a writing medium in ancient Chinese literature. Dear students, in today's lecture, we discussed the various aspects of bamboos. In particular, we discussed the botany of bamboos, then we discussed the cultivation of bamboos, and lastly, we discussed the economic importance of bamboos. Hope you have enjoyed today's lecture. For today, I will take your leave now. Goodbye.